the discovery over the summer of all those unmarked graves and the just the kind of collective trauma that that led to across this country. And yet, uh, few of the political leaders really made it an issue. Uh, indigenous issues weren't really talked about much in the campaign. I think all of the federal party leaders were invited to um, appear before the BC Assembly of First Nations at their annual general meeting. None of them did. What do you make of that? I'll rarely express uh, an opinion as a political journalist, but I feel like the leaders let down uh, Canadians and let down in particular Indigenous Canadians by not prioritizing this issue. Over and over again, politicians say that this is an issue that they are committed to, but it goes off the radar the next day. So we have these discoveries of the unmarked graves at residential schools, and everyone is so struck by it. And the government, for example, um, the Liberal government, puts the flags at half-mast and says that they will remain there until Indigenous leaders say they can go back up. Well, that's a great gesture, but where are the policies? Where's the commitment to really talking about this. Uh, Aaron O'Toole said his first question in Parliament was about Indigenous issues. That's true. Okay, but where was it on the campaign trail? Jugmeet Singh is the one leader who actually visited First Nations reserves and communities, but neither the Liberals nor the Conservatives leaders did. Um, and I think that that is the biggest indicator of how committed they are, is do they spend actual valuable time on the election trail going there, hearing the concerns, understanding the problems. Um, and I don't feel like either of the two big major parties did a very good job of that at all in this election. All right, Mercedes, thanks. Let's go to Farah Nasser in Toronto. And Farah, you have a guest with you. Thanks, Donna. When the election was called this summer, Canadians were reeling from forest fires in the West and the discoveries of unmarked graves at former residential schools across the country. A lot of people were predicting this election would focus on Indigenous issues and climate change. But our next guess was not. Ellis Ross is a Liberal member of the BC Legislature and also a member of the Heisla Nation in Kitimat that is on the northwest coast of BC. Welcome Ellis, thank you for being with us. You, you've been outspoken about reconciliation, how it's tied to giving in Indigenous people more opportunities. And I'm curious, in your view, has any party discussed that to your satisfaction during this federal election campaign? No, not necessarily, because it, this is politics. And Aboriginal issues that have never really uh, actually risen to the top in terms of real change uh, that's really needed in Canada to address Aboriginal issues. When you look, though, at what the conversation has been, I mean, many Canadians, their eyes were opened when we saw when we heard about these horrific discoveries. If, if it's not brought up now, when will it be brought up? Well, it was brought up, but but it's it's actually faded out again, and the commitments made. Uh, don't really describe the complicated, costly, long-term uh, plan that we needed to address the, the remains found, uh, let alone reconciliation. And reconciliation has become such a buzzword, has become such a political term. Actually, nobody can really understand what it means in, in the context of what Aboriginals truly need in today's society. Let me follow up with what you're saying there, and, and I'm being very careful because, of course, when we talk about our, our Indigenous communities, that's not a monolith and you don't speak for everyone. But what's wrong with the way our current politicians are talking about Indigenous issues and climate change and resource development? And, and how should it be handled? How, how should the discussion go, in your opinion? Well, I, I truly believe that uh, when you talk about reconciliation, uh, you really should think about the social issues that Aboriginals face all across Canada. And I'm talking about poverty. I'm talking about uh, children in care. I'm talking about imprisonment. I'm talking about suicide. Uh, the, the political narrative always comes to these buzzwords that talk about everything but the social issues that, that are plaguing Aboriginal people all across Canada. And th that, that's what I really mean. I think true, true reconciliation means that we're addressing those problems and the fundamental uh, problem, uh, the reasons for those problems in the first place. Is it fair to say the way you think these conversations are going just kind of hit the surface that are that are almost superficial? They're not digging deep enough? Oh, without a doubt. Because most of the time when you hear these kind of conversations, election time, you're talking about programs that already exist under Indian Act programming. You're already talking about initiatives that have been played for the last 40 years. Uh, and, and you're also talking about uh, redundancy in terms of Canada's commitment to First Nations people. And specifically what I'm talking about is... Uh, 35 with the Constitution of Canada, which was actually brought in in 1982. So this is, this is just more the same, uh, unless it's uh, a really good program 
meant to support uh, the wishes of First Nations and get them out of these horrible situations. Yeah, I was really excited to have this conversation with you because you have a unique view on these issues. You were the Minister for Natural Gas Development in BC. You've been the, the BC Liberal Party's critic for environment and climate change and that strategy. So with your, uh, how have you woven that, I guess, with your lived experience as an Indigenous man? Oh, it's, it's across the board because I was born and raised on reserve. And uh, if, you're, if you're looking for an example of an Aboriginal uh, born and raised on reserve, what that means, I'm your example. Uh, fortunately, though, for some reason, I was spared uh, the, 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 the worst consequences. Of and then that followed me through my political life on chief and council. And it's actually followed me to my position as MLA in the BC legislature. So it's, it's actually shaped a lot of my thinking, but also it's also shaped my thinking in terms of everybody, no matter what their ethnic background is, in terms of, of what uh, BCers need today. You've certainly given us a lot to think about. Thank you so much. That is Skeena, BC Liberal MLA, Ellis Ross McGwitch.